Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to show you why the Inspire One is such a great platform for mounting a Micasense Red Edge or Parrot Sequoia multi-spectral camera for Agritech surveying. After you finish playing with your first Phantom or Mavic and start looking around for some real world applications for your drone other than just filming things, you'll quickly discover 2D and 3D mapping. These tend to be aimed at construction, inspection and agriculture. And there's plenty of really good freemium software out there to get you started. Things like Drone Deploy and Pix4D have carved out a pretty good niche for themselves. They offer free apps to control your drone and provide all the back-end data processing on a subscription basis. So it looks like you can start a business providing mapping services for money. But you'll quickly discover the information the RGB cameras on these drones only provide a limited amount of information. What you really need is a true multi-spectral camera that provides information across a much wider frequency range particularly if you plan to use it in agriculture technology, so-called Agritech. This extends down to infrared and red edge frequencies. And don't go thinking you can just change the lens on your drone camera for one of the near infrared offerings that are available. These basically just have the IR filter replaced with something else. You do get a slightly extended frequency range but it's nowhere near what's really needed to analyse the images properly. Trust me, I've tried this and it's a waste of time and money if you want to offer a professional service. So, you need to get yourself a true multi-spectral camera. And these are expensive, but they are the professional solution. Probably the most popular is the Parrot Sequoia. This has a form factor similar to a GoPro Hero 4 and gives you four monochrome sensors that capture data in the spectral bands red, green, red edge and near infrared. And it also has a regular 16 megapixel RGB sensor. So it's like having five separate cameras in one box. It also has a sunshine sensor that helps to eliminate shadowing caused by those nice fluffy clouds. And this is a fully self-contained camera that you can rig on your drone. You can even mount it to a Mavic, it's so light. The next step up the ladder is a Micasense Red Edge, like the one I've got mounted on here. This is a lot more expensive, but it is very accurate and high precision, and is designed primarily for Agritech work. It's got five monochrome narrowband sensors covering red, green, blue, red edge, and near infrared. But, for a complete set of data, you'll also need a separate RGB camera to supplement those sensors. This also has a sunshine sensor. They call it a downwelling light sensor on the top here. And that needs to be mounted somewhere clear of the props and free from any shadowing. Now both these cameras have integrated IMUs and you can generally set them up to capture images on a timer and they are both directly compatible with the popular Drone Deploy and Pix4D programs. But the problem is, what drone are you going to use and how are you going to mount them? Yes, there are integration kits out there to mount a Sequoia to a Mavic. A nice idea, because the Mavic has long flight times and Sequoia is pretty light. But the Mavic has real trouble holding track when the winds get anything over about 15 miles an hour, which is not so good. And you could mount it to a Phantom 3 or 4, which is much better in high winds. But if you want to mount a Red Edge on a drone, it's a bizarrely tricky problem. A Mavic simply doesn't have the payload capacity and won't cope with the extra weight. Remember, you'll also need another battery to power the Red Edge, which is even more weight. If you can get it mounted and flying, the Mavic camera suffers from bad rolling shutter problems which compromises the image accuracy. And Pix4D does correct for this while processing the images, but it's not great. Now, Phantom 3 or 4 has better payload capacity and copes with much higher winds, but it still suffers the same rolling shutter issue. 
Not as bad as the Mavic, but it's still a significant problem. Although it's an end of line product now, the DJI S900 makes a great platform for this. It certainly has a payload capacity and you can rig it with an X5 camera. But flight times are a bit limited and more importantly, it's not compatible with Drone Deploy or Pix4D and that makes flight planning really tricky. You'll need to find something else, maybe the DJI GS Pro app, which is pretty horrid. An even better platform is the Matrice N210. Now this has got everything we need. Great flight times, good in high winds and rain, and it provides a suitable power outlet for the Red Edge, and it's easy to rig. And it's compatible with Drone Deploy, Pix4D, and everything else. Perfect. Well, yes, but it's going to cost you at least eight or nine thousand pounds by the time you've got some extra batteries. A similar problem if you go for an Inspire 2. Not quite as much, but it's still really expensive. So, my fix was to use my trusty and reliable Inspire 1 Pro. Again, this is now an end of line product in the DJI product range, but that means you won't be pestered by annoying firmware updates. Now I've had mine for over two years and it hasn't missed a beat. It's been completely reliable. If you haven't got one already, you might find an end of stock new one available at a good price. Or there's plenty of used ones out there, all relatively cheap. But make sure you use the Zenmuse X5 camera. This performs really well and doesn't suffer rolling shutter issues. I designed this Red Edge integration kit that's available from our friends over at Xcopters, and I'll leave the links below. This is also available as a Sequoia mounting kit based on the same mount. These are complete kits with all the mounting hardware you'll need. The only thing you don't get is an external power pack, but I'll show you some recommended ways to power the camera and some recommended batteries. I've been using both the Sequoia and Red Edge mounted to the Inspire 1 to intensively survey trials every few days for the last six months and it works perfectly. So my Inspire is still earning me money. I recently switched over to powering the camera direct from the Inspire flight battery using a Beck, purely for convenience. I haven't measured the reduction in flight times, but it's not significant. I still get easily 15 to 18 minutes with a TB48 battery. Pretty much depends on the wind speed and temperature. Obviously, if you go down this route, take care with the soldering and you will void your warranty, but mine ran out ages ago, so I don't really care. Check out this video up here to see how to fit the Red Edge. I hope you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel down here for updates. It really does help me make better content. I'll see you next time.